Hey, Danielle with Rooted Studio in Platteville, Wisconsin, bringing you a hip sequence today. We're going to start with our blocks in this T-stand configuration. If you don't have two blocks, you can just lay flat on your back. It's not a big deal. But if you do have two blocks nearby, this will help give you a nice chest opening at the same time as we work on hip opening. So if you have two blocks handy, one block goes upright, and this will be where your head is. The second block lays on its long edge. You need a space between them, and then you'll take your back to them. Notice how I'm not sitting right up against my blocks. I want the edge of my block to be in line with this space underneath my rib cage, where my rib makes a V here, the rib cage. So leaning back, might have to adjust the positioning a little bit. Tall block goes underneath your head. Make sure it's level on the ground and not leaning. And then soles of the feet, again, this is a hip class, maybe starting to work them together, letting your knees drop open in butterfly or Konasana, also called bound angle pose. If this is too much on your hips, you can take towels or blankets and roll them and place them underneath your thighs for a little extra support in case you don't have four blocks at home, but you could use yoga blocks here as well. And remember, if you don't have these blocks, you can do this flat on your back, or if this is very uncomfortable to you, just find a position flat on your back. Here, allowing your knees to roll to the ground, finding some openness in your hip space. Your hands, you can take in place wherever it's comfortable, but my recommendation is about 45 degrees from your body, palms facing up. And then maybe lengthening your neck so you can find a comfortable place for your head, but maybe a little more on the back bottom of your neck, creating some length there. Allowing your shoulders to roll open. We have a tendency when we sit to round shoulders forwards and maybe sometimes keep them up towards our ears. So this is a nice chance to counter all the effects of sitting so much in our society. And here, maybe closing your eyes or keeping them soft. Beginning to breathe into your belly space, taking your breath all the way down by your belly button. And as you inhale, letting your belly button rise up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, allowing your belly button to fall back towards your spine. If you can take your breath a little bit deeper using your imagination, can you draw your breath into this space created between your hips and knees, this bowl that you have formed down at the bottom of your mat? Breathing in all the way into that space and releasing on your exhale. Taking a few more breaths like that. And taking your awareness into your hip space, letting your breath just relax and return to normal. Noticing how your hips feel. Is this hard? Do they feel more open? Do they feel delicate or vulnerable? Does this feel good? And just sitting with that for a moment, noticing what's there, not necessarily judging it, but just becoming aware of any emotion that arises, any sensation that you feel. It is said that on our shoulders, we carry the weight of the world. So if you have shoulder tension, it might be from stress and things in your environment or people you deal with. In your hips, it is said we carry our own junk. So today, maybe setting your intention to release whatever it is you can let go of. 
And maybe you have something specific in mind, or maybe you just want to make that a general intention, allowing whatever it is to be released that can be released. So calling forth your intention in your mind, what can you let go of, or do you just want to leave it general, I release whatever it is I can let go of. And we'll take three big breaths here. Exhale out any air that's in your lungs. Take a nice big inhale through your nose. Pause at the top. Now think about what it is you can release or that general intention of releasing. Open mouth, exhale, let it go. Same thing in through your nose. Pausing, holding, what can you let go of? Let it go. Seal your lips, breathe in through your nose, and exhale through your nose. We're going to slowly begin to work our way out, and this is a very deep pose to open with. So take it really slow with me, we'll take this in steps. First, if you are on blocks, bring your elbows closer to your body to help prop you up to a seated position. Once you're seated, keep your legs where they are and just move your blocks out of the way. Then take your hands underneath your knees, bring your knees up towards each other, help your legs extend long and come all the way back down onto your back. And maybe you already noticed some sensation in your body after letting that go. For instance, after coming off the blocks, I felt this cold tingliness going up my back, right where the blocks were. Here I want you to let your feet roll out to the sides and just rest here, becoming aware of any sensation in your body. Taking one more nice big breath into your belly space, letting it go, begin to draw your knees into your chest. We're going to create a little bit of a back rounding in the other direction. So feel free to bring your nose up towards your knees. You can clasp your hands. Maybe you can reach your elbows and just roll a little bit side to side. Maybe you can grab your feet, allowing your back again to round in the other direction. Taking a few more rolls here. And then we'll come up to stand. So if you want to rock and roll your way up or just come up to stand any way that's comfortable for you, you can do that. Shaking it out here, maybe letting your back roll down towards the ground, your head roll down towards the ground. Just listening to your body and whatever your body needs right now to work out that really deep pose that we started with. And then coming up to Tadasana when you're ready. Feet about hip distance apart, really pushing into the four corners of your feet, palms facing forwards. Take your shoulders up towards your ears, pinch your shoulder blades back, and then send them down your spine. But don't stay here in this uncomfortable, like very stuck, rigid position. Just let your shoulders relax gently. Turn on your legs, pulling up on your kneecaps, turning on your thighs. You should feel your kneecaps kind of rise when your quads actually turn on. Maybe turning on your glutes a little bit, letting your head rise up towards the ceiling. So not looking up, still keeping a neutral chin, a neutral gaze, but for pretending that there's a string at the top of your head pulling you up nice and tall. And don't forget to breathe. It's a lot to think about <laughs> that sometimes you might catch yourself holding your breath. Still breathe. Today we're going to work through some moon salutations. So you may have heard of sun salutations. We're starting with moon salutations today. So take your feet nice and wide with your toes pointing out. Take your arms and extend them out, tipping your head back gently. This is star pose. So think of each foot, each hand, and the top of your head as a point of the star. Maybe finding a little bit more of a back bend here and just beginning to extend in each direction. Mm, feels really nice to stretch out, finding length. Now take your hands down like you're holding two trays, like a waitress or a waiter. Bend into your knees, finding almost a sumo squat here. 
goddess pose. Begin to rock a little bit side to side. Slowly starting to warm into your body, warming up joints, bringing some fluid, especially into your knees here and your hips. We're focusing on hips today, so let's get deep into this, sinking down a little bit lower. On your next inhale, come back up to star, maybe tipping your head back just a little bit. And then take your hands to your heart. Take your left toes, turn them in at a 45. Right toes point towards, for me, it's the back of my mat. Take your body and turn it towards the long edge of your mat. Begin to bend into your front knee. We're working into warrior two. And if you want a little more challenge, a little more in the hip, maybe you can work your front thigh parallel to the ground, but that's pretty deep. Make sure you can see big toe, second toe, past your front knee. Again, keeping your body open towards the edge of your mat, the long edge here. Sending your arms parallel to the ground and maybe looking over your right middle finger, coming into warrior two on the right side. Fullest expression, really reaching through your fingers, really pressing evenly in your feet. Can you turn your back leg on, turning on your quad, your kneecaps, and breathe. Flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. Make sure you're not crunching into your back. And come back to warrior two. Straighten your front knee. We're coming into a wide pyramid or wide triangle pose here. So again, make sure your body is still facing me. Reach forwards, forwards, forwards with your right hand as far as you can go. And when you can't go any further, take your right hand onto your shin, left hand up to the ceiling. If you have really long arms, maybe you can reach down to the ground. But if you're finding the ground, what I see in a lot of students is they start to take their left shoulder forwards because they can't truly reach. So if you find your left shoulder collapsing, then just stay on your shin. Or if you have your block nearby, you can use your block. Imagine that you're between two panes of glass. Breathing here. Both arms reaching in opposite directions. And if your hand is on your shin, just imagining reaching through those fingers. Trikonasana, triangle pose. On your next inhale, come on back up. Turn your back foot a little bit more forward. So you're gonna have to like hobble your way around, turning your body towards the short edge of your mat. And again, this is the back edge of the mat for me. Your back foot is still at a 45. Straighten your front knee, body is square coming into pyramid. Now, normally I like to do this with blocks. My blocks are over there. So I'm just gonna come down to my shin, which will work just as well. Take your left hip, draw it forwards, right hip, goes back. Front leg can have a little bit of a micro bend in it, but for pyramid, we want a straight leg here. So we start to work behind the knee, back of the thigh and breathe. We're going to come down into low lunge on this side. So begin to bend your knee, plant your hands, back foot might need to step back a little bit more. In low lunge, make sure that your foot is underneath your knee. Find a little bit of movement here, just rocking back and forth. And come into a twist, left hand to the middle of your mat, right hand sweeps up. Maybe you can look up to the ceiling. Take your right hand back down. Take your back foot in a step just for a little bit of ease to come all the way back up. Turn both toes forwards, bringing your hips forwards at the same time, and begin to come into a side lunge, skandasana, or a ninja lunge down here. This knee for me is so crackly. Oh, it doesn't hurt, but it just sounds gross. I don't know if you can relate. So here in skandasana, maybe finding some movement, whatever feels good for you focusing on your hips. What tension can you let go of in this pose? We're going to come back up into goddess pose. So nice, big, wide sumo squat, toes pointing out. Your knees track over your feet, so they're pointing in the same direction. Two trays. Maybe pulsing here a little bit. Check in with your hips. 
Check in with your intention. What can you let go of? Inhale up, star. Maybe a little bit more of a back bend. Take another inhale. Exhale back down, goddess. Maybe a little bit of side to side motion this time or pulses if you want to keep pulsing here, that's fine too. Coming down into left skandasana, finding your lunge on this side, finding any movement within this pose. And we're going to come back up, turn your body, turn your hips to the opposite edge of your mat, turn your toes forwards, come down into low lunge. Make sure your foot is underneath your knee, adjusting as needed. Now we'll find our twist here, right hand to the center of your mat, left hand sweeps up, maybe looking up to the ceiling. Take your left hand back down. Take your back foot in a step. Straighten your front knee, bringing your hands to your shins. Pyramid, so right hip this time comes forwards. Left hip reaches back. You could use two blocks here. One more breath. Lifting up, turning your body towards the long edge of your mat, readjust your feet if needed for triangle pose. Front leg stays tight and knee is not locked, but leg is straight. Arms reaching out, reach forwards, forwards, forwards to the left until you can't anymore. Find your shin, find the floor or a block, maybe looking up into your right hand. Turn your legs on, be active in this pose. Focus in on your hips. Inhale, come back up. Bend into your front knee, coming into warrior. So you might need to scoot your back leg back a little bit further. Warrior two on this side. Make sure your body is still facing the long edge of your mat. If your hips won't go, at least turn your shoulders this way. Arms parallel to the floor, maybe looking over your left middle finger. Check with your left knee, is it trying to cave in? Can you keep it pushing out and open? Back leg strong, leg turned on. Flip your front palm, reverse, breathe. And come back to warrior two. Coming back into star turning your feet and your body back to the long edge of your mat, feet pointing out, arms up, imagining that star through your body, extending in each direction, head gently dropping back. Exhale down, goddess, holding two trays. Pulsing here. Inhale back up. Bring your hands to your heart. Turn your toes to face the front of the room or the front of your mat, this long edge. I guess I don't know which way you're facing in your room that you're working in right now. And we'll come into a wide-legged forward fold. So begin to fold forwards, allowing your head to hang. You can change your distance. You could step wider or closer. Let your head hang and relax and maybe even shake it yes or no just to start working into your neck a little bit. And here we're going to find some circles. So take your arms and start to cartwheel them up and around and back down to the mat. We're going to do this three times on each side, up and around. It doesn't matter which side you start with. We'll get both eventually. Third time. And now reverse direction. Stay tuned in with your hips. Stay tuned in with your shoulders. Last one, stay tuned in with your intention. 
walk your fingers as far in front of you as you can go and maybe even let your hips slide a little bit backwards like somebody's pulling you back so you're getting a stretch through the backs of your legs through your arms through your armpits let your head gently hang walk back forwards feet together slowly taking them together heel toe inhale up exhale hands to heart finding tadasana here with hands at your heart maybe closing your eyes or keeping them soft checking in with your breath Checking in with your intention. Opening your eyes if they are closed. And let's head up to the top of your mat. Make sure both, blo both blocks are nearby, just so you have them there as support. Inhale your arms overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, hands to shins, half lift. Now see if you can maintain your length as you fold back down. Hanging out here for a moment, high saber. <laughs> Step your left foot back into low lunge. Here in low lunge, drop your back knee and untuck your toes. Begin to walk your foot outside of your hands. Take your toes off the mat, your heel stays on. Bring your blocks back for a little bit of support here. Coming up high into your body here, letting your hips sink down in this pose. Begin to drop your knee to the right, finding some hip opening. Now you can ditch the blocks if you don't want the blocks here. It's just an option. Sometimes we do this and we come down onto forearms or elbows and you can do that too. It just feels a little bit different when you stay up nice and high. Breathing into this space. I'm waiting for my foot to be attacked from behind. And we'll begin to work our way out. So roll your foot back down. And we're actually walking backwards. So take your block back with you underneath your shoulders. Might need to adjust a little bit. Digging your heel in, pulling your toes back. Staying up nice and tall to start. Inhale here, find length in your upper body. And exhale, fold forwards. You can keep your hands in the blocks or maybe you want to walk them out further with or without the blocks. Finding a fold here over your leg, but keep pulling your toes back towards your face so you really get a stretch along the bottom of your leg. Make sure your shoulders are away from your ears. Sometimes we have a tendency to want to scrunch up, so keep them away from your ears. Everything is relaxed. Make sure you're not clenching your jaw. <laughs> and then begin to work your way back up. Walking yourself forwards into your lunge and just moving your blocks out of the way. Pick up your back foot, untuck your toes, lift back up into lunge. And then we're going to step forward. So big step forwards with the left foot pausing here in the middle just to get recalibrated, recenter, and then step your right foot back. Finding low lunge, dropping your knee, untucking your toes, bring your blocks back. Foot needs to go outside of your block, so walk your foot so your toes are off the mat, your heel is on, and then find that hip opener here, maybe staying up tall with the blocks, maybe coming down onto forearms. Really sinking in, letting your knee roll out to the side. It takes the pinky edge of your toe, pinky edge of your foot down towards the mat a little bit. Here again, check in with your breath. If you find yourself holding your breath, that means that this is hard and you need to back out a little bit or stay focused on breathing. Just make sure you're not hurting yourself. Taking one more breath. Beginning to walk your foot back inside your blocks as we work our way back. 
Staying up nice and high, so stopping when your hip is over your knee. Nice and tall, digging your heel in, pulling your toes back, lifting your torso up first. Inhale and exhale, fold. Maybe folding with your blocks or walking out over your foot. Keep pulling your toes back. That's what makes it hard, right? <laughs> That's when you really feel it. Pulling your toes back, keep breathing. And come on back up. Walking forwards, coming back into your lunge and then sending your right foot to meet your left. Moving your blocks out of the way. Bend your knees as much as you need to, forward fold. Begin to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Your head is the very last thing that comes up. Rolling your shoulders back, palms forwards. Once you get up all the way, checking in. What can you let go of? Taking another breath in, letting your arms come overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Find your blocks, bring them back as you fold back down. Lift your right leg. So see if you can get it as high as you can. Finding a standing split here. Blocks are awesome for a little bit of stability here. If you need more challenge, let go of the blocks and maybe grab your ankle or rest your hands on the ground, just gently hovering. But really see how high you can get your leg here. If you need a little more challenge, bend at the knee, bringing your heel towards your glute and extend that out and do that a few times, really getting a stretch, uh, slow contraction here, working into your glutes and your leg muscles. And then bring your right leg down. Just bend into your hips here a moment, sinking your butt back. Come on back up. Hi, Saber. <laughs> Send your left leg up as high as you can go. Letting your head hang, maybe bringing your hands down to the mat or your ankle for more challenge. <laughs> maybe bringing your heel towards your glutes a few times. Oh, there go my strings for my <laughs> sweatshirt. <laughs> the best cat toys are the things that aren't even cat toys. <laughs> And then we'll take your left foot down to meet your right. Move your blocks out of the way. I'm getting attacked. Rolling up one vertebrae at a time. <laughs> take your feet as wide as your mat, toes off, heels on. Inhale your arms overhead. Exhale, sink down, malasana, yogi squat. Using your elbows, really push your knees open. I'm gonna turn so you can see me from the front. My knee is really crunchy. <laughs> Inhale up. Exhale, come back down. So when we come up, it's like a narrow star. Inhale up. Exhale, back down. And from here, we'll come down to the mat however you want to get there. Maybe you can come through Malasana. Beautiful. All right. You're going to take your left leg, bring it parallel to the edge of your mat, whichever edge you're facing. Take your right leg and stack it on top so your knees are over your ankles and you're in this kind of boxed in position. Now, if you cannot stack this way, you don't need to be so wide. You could have just ankles crossed or you could sit in simple cross legs. Either way. So I had said right leg on top. Scoot your hips back, whichever position you're in. If you're able to stack your legs this way, you should get a really good outer hip stretch here. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, begin to walk forwards. If you have blocks nearby, you could even rest your forehead on a block. 
or maybe your arms. Lots of options here. Find something where you can stay for a little bit. And relax into it as much as you can. While you're here, see if you can check in with that sensation. Where do you feel it the most? Can you mentally outline it with your mind? Where does it start? Where does it end? to work your way back up. If you have a block, just move it out of the way. Use your hands to help unstack your legs, and we're going to go right into the other side, so your right leg would come parallel to the top of your mat. If you're able to stack, left leg stacks on top, and again, you can have this wider, or you can just switch your cross of your legs if you're in simple cross legs. Walk your hips back. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, fold. He's gonna jump in the window. So if you hear a big clunk, that's the cat going up into the window. <laughs> now it's really easy as we begin to slow down for our minds to race. So when our body slows down, the mind likes to rev up. And this is where it becomes a practice of what can you focus on in order to help remedy that. It's going to be impossible to make your mind perfectly clear. But can you give yourself something to focus on? Maybe staying connected and anchored to the sensation you feel in your hip. Or maybe you can stay anchored to your breath or your intention. Begin to walk yourself up to a tall seat if you fold it over. Use your hands to help unstack your legs. And let's extend your legs long for a moment before going anywhere else. Maybe bouncing your knees or even finding windshield wipers here. Bringing the soles of your feet together like we did when we started. Instead of being nice and close, take your feet away from you, walk your hips back. And then you can already tell that it starts to put you in a forward fold position and that's exactly where we're heading. So inhale, you don't have to necessarily sit tall, but lengthen your spine forwards and then fold down from here. Blocks are great. You can set your block on your feet and rest your forehead, or maybe you can fold down. Sometimes, I like a little bit of my shoulders too, so I'll take my arms and put them underneath my legs and fold here as well. Finding whatever's comfortable for you, and you can change the distance of your feet if needed. Coming up on your next inhale, using your hands underneath your knees to help bring your feet back together and just lean back into your hands. You can take them facing whatever direction is comfortable just to take a little bit of the pressure off your hips and pause here a moment. I 
finding any movement that works for you, working out any of the kinks of those deep hip stretches. We have one more big hip stretch to go, and that's draw. So you'll need to come into tabletop. And for frog, <laughs> I would recommend rolling the edges of your mat in. I'm gonna be doing this sideways so you can see me, but you'll eventually in frog, take your knees nice and wide, and this gives you a little bit of extra cushion for your knees. So for frog from tabletop, begin to walk your knees as wide as you can get them. But what I want you to focus on is keeping your hips stacked over your knee. Ow, you're attacking my mat, crazy one. Feet are going to be out to the side. So if I were to turn sideways, your feet are like this. So feet are sticking out, hips are in line with your knees, knees are opening nice and wide. If this is too much, you can take your toes together, and this is called tadpole. But here in frog, you can stay up tall if you want, or you can begin to drop down to your elbows. Or maybe you can go down a little bit further. And this is a really intense inner hip stretch, if you haven't already noticed. So make sure that you're breathing here, not holding your breath, not clenching your jaw. Double check that your hips and your knees are still in alignment. You might not be able to see, so you're going to have to feel into that. We're here for just a little bit longer. Coming up to tall arms, if you're down on forearms or elbows. As a really deep stretch, you need to move super slow here. So I like to bring my feet in a little bit for a support, and then I'm gonna slide my knees in closer and closer and closer, a little bit at a time, until they're touching. Bring your big toes together and sink back into embryo, letting your hips rest down towards your heels, forehead on the mat, arms behind you, palms up. Really release your shoulders down to the ground here. Begin to work yourself up. And then we'll come all the way down into your back. Extending everything nice and long. First, just reach your arms behind you. Feel like somebody's pulling your hands and legs in opposite directions. And then bring your hands by your sides, knees up towards the ceiling, cross your right leg over your left. We're gonna find a twist here. But first, just feeling the compression between your thighs, allowing that space, allowing that openness to now be closed. Take your hips and walk them over to the right side of your mat. Leave your shoulders where they are. And then let your feet, or sorry, keep your feet where they are, but let your knees drop to the left. See if you can keep your shoulders reaching down towards the ground, maybe looking over your right shoulder. Again, feeling that compression between your thighs. Use your next inhale to bring your knees back up. Scoot your hips back into the center of your mat and switch the cross of your legs. Feeling the compression first, just pausing here a moment. Allowing that deep hip opening to close. 
keep everything where it's at, but take your hips to the left and allow your knees to drop to the right. See if you can keep your shoulders down and maybe look over to the left. Inhale back up to center, uncross your legs, stretch your legs long. Take your feet as wide as the mat, let your feet gently roll out to the outside. Take your arms nice and wide, palms facing up, sinking in for your final Shavasana. And if there's something else you'd like to take before fully sinking in, feel free. Allow each exhale to take you a little bit deeper, sinking more deeply into your mat. Begin to lengthen your inhales and your exhales. And maybe find a little bit of movement through your fingers and toes. Bring your feet to the mat, bend your knees, roll over onto whatever side is more comfortable for you in a fetal position. Check in with that intention one last time. And when you're ready, push yourself up to a tall seat. Walking your hips back, finding a nice long spine, crown of the head reaches up towards the ceiling. Inhale your arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale them down to your heart. Check in with your hips here before we part ways. Noticing how they feel. Checking in with your breath. Connecting to this place of inner peace and inner calm, knowing that it's always here. You just have to sit quiet in order to find it sometimes. Inhale your arms overhead, palms to touch. Exhale down to your heart. One more time, inhale overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. Thank you so much for being here with me. Namaste.